Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Clubo. Today we will be making this vintage lace angel ornament with chiffon ribbon trim. She's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make this angel, we'll begin with a 20 millimeter head bead and uh, the face is already finished. And of course you can find the instructions for the Rick Rack Ruby face in my Focus on Faces video. It's really easy. Then I have a uh, 1 16th inch ribbon, satin ribbon, it's kind of an ivory color, and six inch wide tulle. So as usual, I will just cut two lengths of this tulle and a piece of this ribbon, fold these two pieces in half, and then tie them off in the center. Doesn't have to be perfect. Do a nice square knot, nice and tight. And trim that a little bit to make those ends more even. Then I'll send the ends of the ribbon through the bead, through the head bead, from the bottom to the top. Slide that down, adding a smudge of glue to the tool and then sliding that down just until the knot is visible at the top of the head. And then I'll tie a knot, an overhand knot, in the end here to form the hanging loop. I'm trying something new. You know, when you make something with vintage lace, this is exactly four inches wide and 18 inches long. You really only have one crack at it. So I haven't been able to practice this, <laughs> but I have sort of thought it through and I think it'll work. This four inches, I wanted a little bit of extra length and I went digging around and I found this. This is, um, I'm gonna use these two, so I'll keep those out. This is chiffon ribbon in a blush pink color. And I really like this color. I like the blush pink mixed with the vintage. And I was thinking I could have a whole lot of fun with this. So I'm just going to go and sort of explore <laughs> where it takes me. And for my first project in this collection, I'm just going to use this wing that I had left over from my last design. This blush pink chiffon ribbon looked really good with this. And then the lace, you can't go wrong. So I put a very fine needle on my machine and I set up my gathering foot and I took one yard of this chiffon and gathered up the edge. And I'm going to sew this to the bottom, but I want the lace, that scalloped edge of lace to show. So I'm going to top stitch this along the bottom edge of my lace. I can see that I have enough here. And then I feel like this is a half a yard with all this ruffle on the bottom is probably gonna be way too long for one angel. So we'll see if I can't get two out of this. This wasn't too hard. I just uh, top stitched it to the bottom. There wasn't any problem. I have this much left over and I'm gonna save this because I think this just by itself would be a cute little angel on a bell, a little bell. I think that might be enough. If it isn't, maybe it could be on a clothespin doll or could use it as an apron. Anyway, I can definitely do something with that. And I'm pretty sure this is just gonna be too full for one angel. So I'm gonna try cutting it in half and we'll see how that goes. I think that's probably enough. What do you think? Yeah, I think it'll work. All right, so I'm gonna just cut this in half right along the fold here and take one of the sections and seam it here like this, right 
here, and that will be the back of her dress. So it's right sides together. I'll try to line up the, the lace here, and then seam this up and turn it right side out. Here's how it looks. You can tell it's not perfect, but um, I think it'll work. Here's my dress and here's my angel. And I have a double strand of quilting thread and a nice long needle. And I'm gonna gather up the top edge of my lace. Just about a quarter of an inch down from the top. This, um, this lace is repurposed. I can tell you that this has been sewn onto something before and so there are some random threads and stitches in the top of this. I'm just gonna go in and out, in and out with a running stitch. And I'm only sewing through one layer. So I'm gonna go all the way around the circle. And then I'll slide that over her head, placing the gathers around her neck and sorting out the dress so that the, I'll choose um, some sort, maybe this little peak of the, of the lace right there. Try to get that centered. See, see what I mean? This little peak. It might mean that the seam in the back is not exactly right, but um, later on when I'm looking at her, <laughs> I'll be glad that I have this centered. All right, so I'm gonna draw that nice and tight and wrap around her neck. So through the gathers, back and forth a couple of times. And then I sort of wrap. I just wanna make sure that is secure um, at the top of the dress, right underneath her chin and also that I'm pulling this little section here together as tightly as I can. If it's too wide, it just makes it look like she has a, a thick, thicker neck and it just doesn't look as good. And especially since I'm gonna be adding another layer with a lace collar, I just wanna get this as tight as I can. Now I'm gonna secure my thread by knotting it off in the back. I'm going to trim out this extra tool that's below her hem. I like to leave it so that there's a little peak of the tool. That looks good. Okay, now I have a length of flat, three quarter inch wide lace for her collar. This is about uh, 15 inches long. And again, I'm gonna gather this up. Whenever I'm choosing a collar lace, I like to choose a contrast to whatever the dress is. So if this is, you know, cream color, I'll use more of a white, or if this is white, I'll use more of a cream. I like to layer my whites just to give a little bit more interest. So I'm gonna fold back the first edge, and then I have a doubled strand of quilting thread. I'm gonna secure that with the knot. There's a knot in the end. And then I'll just gather this up all the way from one end to the other. That's all gathered up. And now I'm gonna place this around her neck, joining the ends in the back. There we go, that looks good. So I'm going to distribute the gathers so that they're even around the neck there. And I like having a little lift on the sides and then like flat in the front and back. So I'm going to go back and forth from the back to the front. And then I will secure the knot in the back. My needle is very thin and it's already bent, so I'm being <laughs> kind of careful with it. 
All right, so there we go now. I will secure my thread in the back. Now I know I'm going to use this for the wings. And I'm kind of not sure that I want to use this because it might be too busy. So I'm going to see if I have just maybe some solid white flowers or even solid pink. I just don't want to add all these colors. I think these cream colored flowers are going to be great. This, these are um, paper forget-me-not flowers. They're not hard to find. Let's see, but first I need to add a bow. So I have my 1 16th inch satin ribbon and I will tie a bow. <laughs> I know you don't need to watch me tie a bow. It'll be quick. There we go. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue to the center of the bow. So I'll lift up the collar and place the bow underneath the collar. Just hold that there for a second. That looks good. And now for these cream colored forget-me-nots, I'm going to take a small piece of this white florist tape. You can find the white florist tape usually in the bridal or the wedding department of any craft store. And kind of twist it like that. Actually, sometimes you can even find um, like gold and silver. All, there, the florist tape comes in all kinds of colors now, not just green. I'm going to cut this off and then I'm going to put some glue right here. See where I've taped all of that? A generous amount of glue and then I'm just going to push it right on her collar. There we go. That looks good. Yeah, I really like mixed media. And so I love that this project has lace and ribbon and tulle and wood and paint and paper and wire and yarn, all kinds of different media. All right, let's do her hair. So for her hair, I'm going to use my favorite loopy mohair yarn. I'm gonna wrap it five times. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and. Then I'm going to take the top end and wrap it all the way around and then pick up the first end and tie off the center of the figure eight with a square knot. I'll do a second bundle the same way. Leave a long tail and wrap one and two and three and four and five and. I can't see where it matters how exactly how wide the loops are. I used to be way more concerned with that, but it doesn't really matter. She's just going to have a little bit longer or a little bit shorter hair. And I like to leave a little bit of extra because I don't want that knot to come undone. Now I'm going to squeeze a penny of glue. It's a, it's a circle, but it's filled in. A disc of glue on the back of her head. It's a generous amount of glue. And then the knot from the yarn bundle goes right behind the ribbon. And then I'm sticking the loops into the glue. This will be the back of the head, and so it doesn't have to be super neat. The second bundle is for the front, so I'm going to squeeze a little bit of the glue right there in front of the ribbon, and then press the center of the bundle right there. I have to be careful. I don't want to get my hanging loop caught up in the glue. Just. Uh, Kind of hold that until the glue is secure and then I'm going to twist this toward the back and after I add a line of glue right here twist and press into the glue always twisting toward the back 
Makes a nice little hairstyle. So there's that line of glue on the side, and I just twist and press. By the way, you can use almost any yarn. I mean, you know, use your common sense as long as it's the scale is good. You don't want to use a super thick jumbo yarn, but it doesn't have to be exactly this yarn. Okay, I'm going to squeeze some glue on this side and press that into the side of her head. Yay! Okay, sometimes these little ends wind up where they can kind of look like bangs, but in this case, it's too far back. So I'm gonna trim that little end there. And I think that looks really cute. All right, here is her halo. I'm gonna cut off about two inches of 20 gauge gold wire. I like to wrap it around a thimble to give it a little bit of a round shape like that, like a U. And then I'm going to add glue to each end. And then I'm pressing it into her hair. So it's kind of like a hairband, like that. Now I have this, um, this wing piece left over from my last project, but I'll show you how I made it. I started with a piece of plain white cardstock, and then I just collaged a bunch of vintage looking papers. I just tore them and stuck them on. I started with some spray adhesive, and then, and then I kind of used glue stick to tack down the little edges. And then this is a four inch scalloped circle die for die cutting. And I can just set it like that and run it through my machine. Here we go. And now I punch this out. I ran this through my die cutting machine. Then I'm going to look at this and kind of determine, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut straight across here. So that way I get some pink showing here and some pink showing here. So this is actually fabric tape. Let's see. I try to cut it to approximately the same length as the top edge. This cut edge is just better off if you cover that. Um, you can also use washi tape. So this is this has adhesive on the back. I've never used it for anything else, but it's great for this. <laughs> And then I'm going to apply this to the top edge. It's a little too long. And then fold it over. And I didn't do it exactly straight, but that's okay. All right, and then this one, the same thing. So now I'm going to add a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine. I'm going to sew with my sewing machine around the uh, curved edge of this. Sometimes I do it before I cut it and add the tape, but this time I just forgot. There we go. Now I'll add some glue right here to the top center of the wing piece, and I'm going to press the back of her head right into the glue. Cute. It's really cute. There's um, there's a little bit of wonkiness in the tape is a little bit crooked and the, the loops of the bow aren't exactly the same length and I think that just makes it perfect. Here is the previous project just so you can compare. You see they are nice companions and they kind of look like part of a collection. So I think I might continue down this path with a vintage lace plus blush plus collage look. We'll see how it goes. 
Thank you for watching my video. If you're enjoying my tutorials, please like, share, and subscribe.